The black box didn't scream. It didn't sound any alarms or even whisper a warning, but it quietly captured the final 38 seconds of Air India Flight 171, seconds that turned a smooth takeoff into a fatal nosedive. No storm, no explosion. And yet, something was horribly wrong. What investigators found inside that box would raise more questions than answers, and what it didn't record might be even more terrifying. Here's why. When investigators pulled the flight data and cockpit voice recorders from the rooftop wreckage of a nearby hospital, they expected noise, chaos, confusion, warning bells, crew calls, something. But what they got was almost unsettling in its silence. From the cockpit voice recorder, or CVR, the first 15 seconds of Flight 171 were unremarkable. Ambient cockpit noise, normal callouts, engines humming as expected. But then, at the exact 15 second mark, there was a faint grunt, almost like someone shifting uncomfortably in a chair, followed immediately by a subtle click. Then, nothing. The flight data recorder told the other half of the story. Right after that click, both engines simultaneously throttled back to idle. Not a gradual reduction, not a staggered engine response. This was a clean, sudden drop in thrust, like someone had physically pulled the levers back in one motion. But here's where it gets eerie. There was no system warning to indicate engine rollback, no thrust asymmetry caution, no engine out alert. Even the master caution light remained dark. To make things worse, the CVR didn't capture panic or troubleshooting. There was no checklist reading, no crew confusion, nothing that even suggested they were aware the aircraft had lost thrust. It's not because the pilots were incompetent, it's because the systems never told them. And when you're at low altitude, Flying blind isn't just dangerous, it's terminal. So investigators had to ask, what could cause both engines to drop to idle simultaneously without being detected or challenged by the aircraft's flight logic? That's when they found something seemingly unrelated, a defect in the captain's seat track, documented in maintenance just days earlier. And that small detail? It would become the turning point of the entire investigation. Once the mechanical team ran simulations using Boeing's engineering data, the nightmare scenario came together, piece by disturbing piece. That seat defect, logged as adjustment stiffness in a previous maintenance report, had been temporarily addressed by replacing a locking pin. But critically, no one conducted a post-repair test to verify the fix. As a result, when the aircraft rotated for takeoff and the captain braced against the acceleration forces, the seat slid backward, hard. That 30 centimeter movement doesn't sound like much until you realize that in a narrow cockpit, it's enough to disorient the pilot and force an instinctive physical reaction. In this case, the captain reached forward to stabilize himself. His right hand contacted the thrust levers and inadvertently pulled them back. In a simulator, it looks like a flinch. In real life, it turned a climb into a descent. This wasn't a long chain of procedural mistakes. It was one single movement that triggered a cascading failure. And the worst part? The system didn't fight back. There was no flight control logic to flag this sudden, uncommanded throttle reduction. The aircraft simply obeyed. In most commercial jets, a function like TOGA, take off and go around, would restore thrust when pressed. But in this case, it didn't. Investigators believe the aircraft's flight computers didn't recognize the power loss in time to allow TOGA to override it. Sensor data was delayed. Inputs were interpreted as normal. The engine stayed at idle. Meanwhile, the crew, flying what they believed was a routine departure, were managing pitch and speed in visual conditions, unaware that their aircraft had become a high-tech glider. They had no real time to troubleshoot, no altitude to trade, and no clues from their instruments to help them react. From the outside, the Dreamliner looked like it was climbing normally, until it wasn't. Within seconds, it had stalled. The aircraft pitched down and slammed into the urban landscape at high speed, leaving no time for recovery, no last-second heroics, and no survivors, all because of a seat. But even more disturbing, because the system let it happen without a single audible warning. Now here's the part 
that truly makes your stomach turn. Everything that could have prevented this crash should have been in place. This wasn't the 1980s. This was a state-of-the-art Boeing 787 Dreamliner, a modern airliner packed with layers of digital protections, sensors, and software safeguards, and yet not one of them stepped in to save Flight 171. Let's start with the toga button. It's designed to be a last resort lifesaver. Press it, and the engines spool up instantly to full power. Except in this case, it didn't respond. Why? Because the flight control computers were too slow to realize the aircraft was no longer in a valid takeoff configuration. By the time the system figured out something was wrong, it was already too late. The speed trend vector, which normally helps pilots anticipate acceleration or deceleration, gave no helpful indication of the rapid loss in airspeed. Why? Because the engines were still technically functioning, and the data from the airspeed sensors was slightly behind the real dynamics of the aircraft. There was a lag, a delay, a few seconds in the wrong direction, and you're done. Engine idle detection? No chime, no indication. The system didn't see it as a failure, because technically, nobody told it it was. The engines hadn't flamed out. No birds, no fuel issues, just low power. And bizarrely, that's not something the software was designed to scream about. Cabin pressure? There was a slight drop, but not enough to trigger a warning. Again, everything looked marginally acceptable on paper. It was a perfect storm of near-normal data that masked a deadly abnormality. This wasn't a pilot error in the traditional sense. This was a silent failure of the safety net. The very system that was supposed to compensate for human mistakes, mechanical quirks, or momentary confusion did nothing. And that silence wasn't accidental. It was designed into the logic. So let's ask the real question. Why wasn't there a software safeguard to reject uncommanded throttle pulls below 400 feet? Why didn't Boeing design a rule like, if the plane is on takeoff and both engines go to idle without pilot confirmation, ignore it? The answer? Because no one thought this scenario was likely enough to program for. But that's the problem. When you build redundancy only for probable risks, you leave a back door open for improbable, but catastrophic ones. The entire aviation ecosystem depends on the idea that if a human slips, the system will catch them. But in the case of Flight 171, both the pilot and the plane slipped, and nothing caught them. And that's the real horror here. Not the seat, not the engines, not even the impact. It's the silence, the software's indifference, the training's blind spots, the logic gaps we all assumed were sealed. So now the question isn't what went wrong. It's how many other gaps like this are still out there, quietly waiting. By the time investigators pieced together the sequence behind Air India Flight 171, it was clear this wasn't just a freak accident. It wasn't a random failure. It was the logical result of a system that was stretched thin, overlooked warning signs, and gambled on good enough being safe enough. Let's start with maintenance. Records revealed the captain's seat had been reported faulty weeks before the crash. The seat locking mechanism had been flagged, adjusted and, allegedly, fixed. But here's the kicker. No one tested it afterward. The paperwork was there. The sign-off was there. But the safety? Nowhere to be found. Dig deeper, and it gets worse. Investigators found fake signatures, mismatched log entries, and ignored inspection alerts. This wasn't just one error. It was a culture. One where cost-saving shortcuts and rushed job sign-offs quietly replaced the hard work of real, verified safety. And it wasn't just the plane. The pilots, both experienced, both capable, hadn't been trained on the latest version of the Dreamliner's flight software. In fact, their recurrent sessions still used older simulation logic that didn't even model the throttle-idle edge case that doomed them. Add to that the human cost. The crew had been flying back-to-back -back legs for 36 hours with minimal rest. Fatigue dulls reaction time, clouds judgment, and narrows focus. So when the captain instinctively pulled back on the thrust levers to steady himself and the engines dropped, there wasn't time to question what just happened. He likely didn't even realize it. Experts later described the accident as 
a programmed tragedy, not because someone intended it, but because the outcome was inevitable the moment those gaps aligned. A compromised seat, a reflex, a silent system, a tired crew, a broken checklist, and a plane that assumed everything was fine because the code never imagined otherwise. Today, a memorial is being built for the 307 souls lost in that 38-second fall. But honestly, the real memorial should be in our procedures, our systems, and our mindset. Because this crash wasn't about one seat, it was about all the places where we assume someone else is catching the mistake. The black box told us what happened. Now it's our job to listen and make sure the silence that killed Flight 171 never happens again.